Hey there, I assume most of you know what a Dublin time refers to, but just in case some of you may not know, a Dublin time is the period of time required for something to double in size. And this can be applied to population growth. To give an example, let's say that you have a beautiful flower garden that suddenly becomes affected by a new type of fungus. The doubling time for the said fungus is 24 hours. So with every day the fungus population would double in size, thus killing rapidly your flowers. And let's say that considering the size of your garden, it will take 30 days for the fungus to completely destroy it. Your ability to save your garden depends heavily on how fast you notice the problem. If you realize you have a problem when your garden is little over 6% affected by the fungus, you will only have 4 days left to solve it. If, however, you notice the problem one day later, the fungus population would have doubled in size, affecting about 12.5% of your garden, and leaving you with only 3 days left to deal with it. The next day, your garden will be 25% destroyed, and you will only have 2 days to find a solution. And if you only get to see the problem one day after that, your garden will be 50% affected by the fungus, and that would be your final day when you could do something about it. Because the next day the fungus population will double in size again, and your entire garden will be lost. It took 26 days for the fungus to affect about 6% of your flower garden, and from that on, only 4 days to destroy it 100%. You may have noticed the problem during the 26 days and thought, it's not that bad, I'll deal with it later. Or maybe you were distracted and didn't even realize there is a problem during those 26 days. But from that on, you have only 4 days left to find a solution. In 1950, the Earth population was at about 2.5 billion people. It only required less than 40 years to its doubling time, reaching over 5 billion by 1990. Again, the world population doubled in less than 40 years. That's less than the average life of a human. And now we are pushing 7 billion people, in a world with a changing climate and limited resources, some of which are at the base of our modern civilization. Most of the energy resources we have grown to depend on are not renewable. They cannot be produced, regenerated or regrown. When they're gone, they're gone, and that's it. And that includes oil, coal, natural gas and nuclear power. Many people are oblivious to how important oil is in our day-to-day -day life. Almost everything you use and take for granted your TV, your computer, your furniture, your clothing, comes through means of transportation that require oil or are produced using oil. And that includes your food. Even if you're a farmer and you grow your own stuff, things like pesticides and fertilizers are produced using oil. For many, no oil would literally mean no food. For the rest, it would at best mean a drastic change in what we call now civilization, as we would be forced to adapt to a much simpler way of life that you may find hard to imagine and even impossible to accept at this point. As for the renewable energy sources such as solar energy, wind power, hydroelectric power or geothermal energy, so far all of them together can provide only a small fraction of our energy needs. You may be an optimist and think, well, science will come up with something. But what if they don't? What then? What if we are in the 26th day and by the time we realize we must take action, there's just not enough time left. You may hear people saying that overpopulation is a myth, that we are having less and less children, so at some point the world population will start decreasing. <laughs> That's not likely to happen anytime soon. While the birth rates are in fact getting lower worldwide due to modernization, the use of contraceptive methods and so on, so are the death rates. Along with medical progress, the infant mortality rates are lower and lower, and people are living longer and longer so the world population continues to grow alarmingly fast. Also, along with modernization, the consumption also grows at an accelerating pace. We live in a culture that glorifies consumerism, that promotes the idea that the more stuff you have, the happier you are, causing our consumption to be hugely higher than our necessity. It is in our nature to want things, but our desires are not meant to make us happy. Nature doesn't care about happiness. They're only meant to keep our survival instincts active. As soon as we satisfy one desire, it only triggers another, to keep us motivated, to give us goals and a sense of purpose. So our will to live is stronger and our chances to reproduce increase, which is the only thing nature cares about, not happiness. And yes, the fact that we keep wanting more and more is why we are so successful. We are the most successful species on this planet. But this is also what's going to be the end of us. And not just us, because we are destroying everything around us.
another thing that is glorified to an insane extent is having children. And yes, religion is a strong component in that. Because most religions, if not all, proclaim it is your God-given right to have children. But not only that, it's almost your duty to be fruitful and multiply. But even with non-religious people, when they hear about someone's choice to be child-free, they seem appalled by the idea. As if you cannot be a complete human being unless you procreate. I have no desire to have biological children. Ever. And it's not because I dislike kids, I actually love children. And I will at some point maybe adopt. But personally, I see just no value in my children having my genes. Being my own flesh and blood. It is just a cultural construct. It means absolutely nothing to me. We are products of our environment. It is how you raise your children that matters. And I also disagree with this idea that you would love your children more if you contributed with an egg or a sperm to them. I honestly don't understand why there are so many couples who would undergo years and years of fertility treatments before even considering the idea of adoption. Why waste so much time and money and energy when there are so many children in desperate need of a family? And there's really no necessity for more human beings in the world at this point. I think it was about two years ago when I read in some celebrity magazine that babies are the new handbag and everybody was joking about it. It is not a joke. There are Christian missionaries who are preaching to people in third world countries that using a condom would cause impotence. In some countries it is illegal to have an abortion or to even use contraception. I am sure you know by now about the laws recently passed in Oklahoma in order to prevent abortion. One of them allows doctors to not inform the parents if the fetus has any defects. So knowing if your baby is gonna have a birth defect or not, that's not your right to know anymore. And the other one is forcing the women who want to have an abortion to have an ultrasound first, that they would have to pay for, to have their fetuses in their faces, while some doctors explain to them that this is their little hands and this is their little beating heart, to make them feel guilty, to shame them, to torment them out of the abortion. I don't even know how to end this video. I know it would be redundant to repeat what everybody already knows, but very few care to apply. Save energy, save water, use less gas, stop buying every single piece of shit the media tells you to buy that you have no use for. Stop buying more food than you eat. We are throwing away about 30% of our food. And this is while one third of the world population is starving to death. Also, if you want to have children, especially if you want a big family, just please consider the idea of adoption. Or if you already have children and you are pressuring them into giving you grandkids, just think that your grandchildren or their children may not have much of a world left to live in.